Hi neighbors. Welcome to the Horton Homestead. Today we are going to talk about some maple syrup frequently asked questions. Uh, these are all questions that we had when we first got started and so we you know went through did our research and uh, kind of compiled a list of information so that way you know people that are looking to start off uh, they have all this information right here um, and then you know they can reference back to it and you can go further into detail if you need but um, we should have most of the uh, information that you need to get started. So first question, when does tapping season start? Um, so it starts when temps are above freezing during the day and when they're below freezing at night. So the sap is stored in the roots and it goes up the tree to the branches when it warms up. And so that's how you get that flow from going up and down and that's how it actually releases, you know, goes through to the tap is during that time frame. Um, of the temperatures so since you know the weather varies from where you're located at and uh, you know the year itself it kind of ranges between mid-February to mid-April um, I know this year we are later than what we were last year and we are still barely getting any syrup so right. or any sap out so you know it really just depends on the weather of that year but um, it's definitely when the the temperatures are above freezing during the day and below freezing at night Number two, how many taps can you put in a tree? So the size uh, 10 says what we've looked up. 10 to 20 inches uh, is good for one tap. 20 to 25 inches is good for two taps. And then 25 plus, uh, you can put three taps in it. That's what most recommended people say, don't put more than three taps. I watched a guy, he put six taps in a tree, but uh, supposedly not good for it, so. Yeah, we don't I wanna drain it too much. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend putting yeah. more than three. And uh, you take that measurement at like um, three or four feet up up high, you know, kind of at like waist high of the tree. So that way, uh, yeah, that's, that's where you take that measurement from. Question three, how much sap do you get from a tree? Um, so it really just depends on the soil, on uh, the type of tree it is, and the, um, the size of the tree as well. Uh, so most, uh, the average is between 10 and 20 gallons per season. Question number four is how much syrup do you get from sap? And so the general ratio is 40 to 1. So that means if you have 40 gallons of sap, then you will get one gallon of syrup. We are part of a group online that's like, um, you know, backyard maple syrup makers. And a lot of people are saying that it's taking more um, then that 40 to 1 ratio, it's more like a 65 to 1 ratio. So um, it kind of really just, it varies. They say the average is 40 to 1. We didn't really keep track of it last year, so we don't know personally. I know we just, our first boil, we did about 6 gallons of sap, and we got a little less than one quart. So um, I don't know what that ratio is at the top, the top of my more head. More than 40 to one. I think it's more than 40 to one. So, um, you know, we will keep track of it, and then that way we can uh, let, you know, let you know at the end of the season what our average was. So. Number five is, can you tap the same tree every year? As long as your tree is healthy, <clears throat> you have, yeah, you can tap it as long as it's healthy, but just don't tap it in the same spot. So number six, how do you tap a tree? So you want to take your drill and get a 5 16 drill bit and mark it at one and a half inches um, in depth. So you don't want to drill into the tree deeper than that because you will get into the heartwood and that is where you are uh, opening it up to bugs and infection and we don't want to hurt different our diseases. trees yeah different diseases so we don't want to hurt our trees and we want to protect them we don't want to go any deeper than that and uh, so you just drill into it um, kind of on a little upward angle like 45 degree angle and then just put your tap in it tap it with a uh, hammer until it hits it'll, the back of it yeah it'll kind of tap like tap 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 and then when it hits the back it'll make like a more of a thud sound so mm -hmm. you can just kind of tell when it hits that different sound to stop hammering mm -hmm. it in. Yep. And uh, we did make a specific video on this as well and I will put that up in the corner so um, if you want some deeper information on that you can check that out. So. Okay, number seven. How do you collect the sap from the tree? So the sap automatically comes out of the tree just from its natural process but there's a few different ways that you can um, 
take it depending on the size of your operation. You know, if you're a smaller operation like we are, or if you have a very large um, goals and plans and you want to have hundreds of taps. And it really depends on the location of your trees as well, if you have them close together or if they're a little farther apart. Um, so the first one is you can just connect the tap to a bucket with a line. And this is what we're doing this year. Um, you know, we have one bucket pretty much one bucket per tap. This is much more labor intensive. It's a lot more hands-on because you have to take the bucket every single time you are collecting your sap and dump it out and then bring it back or, you know, it's just a lot more buckets to handle. Um, the second way is hanging a jug from the tap. So you're, you don't have that line going down from the tap down into a bucket anymore. Your tap just has a little hook on it and you can hang bags or a bucket or something like that from it. Um, this is still labor intensive, but it reduces the need for the line down into the bucket. And then the third way is to have um, pretty much like a network of lines connecting each tree. So you have your tap, you have a line that comes down and connects to a longer line that connects to the other trees. And then they all go together into one um, container that collects it. And then you just take it from there to boil it. So if you have trees that are close together, if you have a lot of trees that are close together, you know, that's probably the better option for you. Um, it's a little more pricey I feel because of the tap well, because of you, uh, how much line you have to buy but um, and I we've never done that and I don't really plan on doing that because mm -hmm. ours are a little space farther apart yeah. so I haven't really looked into that very much I think but. what we need more right now is to set up some kind of either put up a barrel on a trailer and pull behind us or some kind of unit in here where mm -hmm. we can just go to the trees grab the bucket dump it in our holding tank in here yeah and then fill it up and then bring it to our evaporator when we're ready to boil mm -hmm. it instead of taking the buckets back and forth which I guess we just dump them a different bucket and take it back and forth but still more than one bucket when we could just be dumping it all in one big container but after we get that set up I think that's the best way far as like she said if you do the jugs on the tree that's something you'd have to check every day when the flaps the sap is uh, mm -hmm. flowing like the buckets you can leave for a couple days before you need to check it or whatever yeah and it depends on how fast the the sap is flowing yeah. too you know this the type of season you're having so but. so um yeah those are pretty much the three basics that i don't really know i don't really know of any other ones but there yeah. might be some out there if you know of one put it in the comments below <laughs> but yeah Anyways, uh, number eight, how do you turn the sap into syrup? Well, the only thing that's different between sap and syrup is the water content. So you take your sap, yeah, you take your sap and you boil it down to where there's, uh, you know, very minimal water. I don't know the actual percentage of how much water sugar say, content it's supposed to be. I forgot. No, yeah, no. Hmm, that's probably something I should have looked up, huh? I think it was like 70, 30, like when it was first sap like 70 cent water and 30 I don't know. cent syrup or something i don't want to say because i don't want to say the wrong thing so i'm yeah. just gonna leave it as ooh, i did not look up that specific percentage um yeah so you just boil the water out of it but you want to be careful that you don't boil it too much because then um the sugar will crystallize and you'll get you know sugar, sugar sand. sand in it so and then it won't be as flowy either it'll yeah. turn more into like a, a maple sugar instead of a Maple you can syrup. you can burn it too, and it'll get out like the taste won't be as good. Mm -hmm. but, um, so number nine, how do you boil the sap? <laughs> so once again, there's a couple different ways. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the first year we did a turkey fryer, mm -hmm. and we used uh, just propane one and one big pot and boiled it out, and it just seemed to take forever, and we were paying for the propane and. Yeah. Uh, just all the work and the pay for the propane and stuff, it just didn't really seem... Didn't really even out. Yeah. You know, I mean, I feel like it, it probably did even out, but there wasn't was, much room to make a profit on it if we were going to actually sell, sell it, it or, you know, be profitable. Yeah, or I feel like, too, the amount of work and what you pay for the propane, you could just buy and have, you know, really good servants mm -hmm. to spend a lot of money on it or whatever. But And then, so, this year we bought the the evaporator with the wire or food, or la la, 
that's wood fire and mm -hmm. it's just a 55 gallon drum it has two slots cut in it and two stainless steel pans sit on it mm -hmm. it's got a chimney coming out and uh and i can uh, i'll put a picture of it yeah i've only there. used it once so far this year and it seemed to do better than that's turkey fryer yeah i did the mm -hmm. job and so i was pretty happy with that mm -hmm. and then uh third is more of a bigger uh syrup boiling operation you could make a big fire pit basically out of cinder blocks and then uh, get either find a big stainless steel pan or have a steel shop make you one to the dimensions you want but um, a lot of people they'll build these and have that you know pan big you know 100 to 200 gallon pan or whatever it is uh, sitting and then you just stoke that fire up and it just boils gallons mm -hmm. and gallons of water on the sap real yeah. quick so um but that's like i said for a bigger operation for what we're doing we wouldn't be able to feed mm -mm. enough sap in it to keep it going so. yeah yeah we would not have we'd get a fire going in there and it'd be roaring and all of our sap would be done yeah. <laughs> and then we would we'd just have to put be the waste. fire out yeah. yeah we'd have to put the fire out so, <laughs> so yeah now on to number 10 how do you know when the sap is done boiling so the more the most accurate way to determine if it is actual syrup <laughs> is to use a hydrometer and so the hydrometer measures the density of the water and that determines you know how much water there is in there like the, the water content um, if you don't have a hydrometer you can use a like a candy thermometer um, it's a little more temperamental that way but it, you just boil it to the uh, degree of seven degrees above how water boils at your altitude so figure out at what temperature water boils at your altitude and add seven degrees to that and when your sap hits that temperature then it is syrup <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was a mouthful <laughs> that was a tongue twister <laughs> um well, i think that's we just had top 10 i think oh but i've got more oh okay well we have more here <laughs> number 11 how long does it take to boil sap um yeah i don't i mean it, it's really uh, it depends on your evaporator because yeah. for the turkey fryer it was like almost seemed like a uh, hour a gallon so five gallon bucket would take me five, five hours, hours to boil it down and then with this evaporator i'd say about three hours once i get it tuned in right and stuff yeah for um, the five for the five out five gallons and three hours yeah five yeah 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 so three so that and say that's about three hours and uh and then that big boiler, I think that would that guy say that he was boiling down like fourteen gallons in an hour or something, something like that. Or yeah, it was it was it, it was, was like five lot. or six. But yeah, I don't know. It was quite a bit. He said that he was boiling down an hour. So mm -hmm. really, it just depends on your evaporator. Um, but on average, we from what we've seen is about ten gallons. Well, when we, we Googled to try and find an average number, not just based off of our, you know, numbers, and it, they were just all over the place. We had people that said, what, 10 gallons took three hours, 20 gallons took 12 hours, uh, yeah. you know, and so... So I think it's just based on their evaporator. Yeah, so on what you have. it's kind of hard to tell uh, how long, really, it's going to take you... I mean, I'm going to definitely say it, it takes a few hours, you know. It's, oh, it's it, going it's it's to be a long time. process wherever you have, especially if you don't have a big heater or something to boil it down fast and hot, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to probably take you a, at least an hour or a gallon to a half hour or a gallon to get mm -hmm. it boiled out. So with that, I think uh, we'll continue down with number 12, and that is how do you store the syrup? So you want to put your hot syrup in a sterilized glass container um, and you just put the cap on it and it seals itself. You can use a plastic container, um, you know, put the, put the warm sap in it, turn it on its side so that way it, you know, sterilizes the top of the cap, it sterilizes that little air, the glass area that, you know, the sap or the syrup doesn't hit all the way sitting flat. So just turn it on its side for a little bit and let it kind of, uh, heat that area up and sterilize it and then, um, yeah, keep it closed up in a you know a cool, dry place. Or once you open it, then you can put it in your fridge. So. Number thirteen is syrup production profitable. <laughs> 
<laughs> we don't that. we don't have our phone on us. That's we were when we googled this, we yeah. asked, "Is syrup production profitable?" And it's you know whatever Google Voice was said, mm, not much. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I broke down our numbers of what I'm hoping our production will look like. So one quart, the average sells for twelve dollars. So each tree per season we're gonna get about 120 to 240 just kind of depends on you know the size of the tree um you know the soil the temperatures it kind of ranges through there so with 40 taps that brings us four thousand eight hundred dollars to nine thousand six hundred dollars and so the middle is seven thousand two hundred so i'm going to use that kind of middle number and so for our expenses we paid 250 dollars for the evaporator that's a one-time you know one-time cost for that we can continue to use year after year. We did not pay this much for a bucket, but brand new at the you know family farm and home or tractor supply, whatever big box store you're getting your buckets at, it's like eight dollars for a bucket, bucket with lid. a lid. Yeah, so if you do eight dollars a bucket times forty because we have forty taps, that's three hundred and twenty dollars. And then we spent two dollars for the tap and line, and so that's eighty dollars. And we paid $25 off of Amazon for a hydrometer. And then- We bought uh, like filters and funnels and stuff too. Yeah, we, we did that I didn't uh, add into this. That was afterwards. Yeah, um, um, the, um, the hydrometer cup too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the hydrometer I mean, I guess that stuff's not, uh, it's just little items. Yeah, maybe but. like an extra hundred bucks, you know, onto it. Um, so we have $675 for our setup. Um, so add a hundred bucks to that. So 775, almost 800 bucks. And then the containers, the to, containers bottle to bottle it. Yep, I paid a dollar twenty for each container, um, and so that was forty eight dollars for all of the bottles, and that brings our total to eight. what eight twenty three, okay. about eight hundred and twenty three dollars. And so you know if we're going to pro if we're going to be able to sell them throughout the year for seven thousand two hundred, and we spent eight hundred bucks for it. I mean, yeah, it's a long time. It's a lot. It's definitely a labor of love. It takes a long time to it's, boil it down. I mean, you make money depending on the scale, because I mean, you're you're making money, but like depending on some people, like they have to make a certain amount of money. Like to them, that wouldn't be nothing. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you don't need as much money to live and do things day by day, then you know. So for us, it's profitable enough for us to do it, um, but. You know, if you're in it to make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, then, uh, you know, I don't know, might not be for you. <laughs> so, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, information that we gave to you. If you have any extra information that you want to add in the comments below, um, we would love to do that. Share with the community. If you have any questions, also comment below and I will do my best to um, answer back at you. So, well, that's it. Have a good rest of your day, neighbors. Bye. Yep. Uh, these are all questions that we had when we first got started and so oh dang I don't like that you can see see the, the shadow of the dang thing it's trying to say hello all right restart well you can still use that and just clip it into here it's a different view different angle. hi neighbors welcome to the Howard homestead <laughs> <laughs> Take two. Hi, neighbors. Welcome to the Horton Homestead. <laughs>